Hey everybody, this video is called Victory Over AI, and tonight we're going to continue our pass-through study here in the book of Joshua, looking at the 8th chapter of the Victory Over AI. And on Saturday, or I believe it was Saturday, we went over chapter 7, and we see that Israel was defeated at AI, and now they're going to have some victory. So, Joshua chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid nor be dismayed take all the people of war with you and arise and go up to ai see i have given into your hand the king of a the uh, king of ai his people his city and his land so we see that god gives joshua instructions and you're going to see a common theme through the book of joshua that god continues to encourage joshua to not be afraid to fear not and the first key to regaining victory was to be encouraged after a tough stumbling in the last chapter as a result of Achan's sin. And it was time for Israel to move forward and know that God has not left them, that God had not abandoned them. And God allowed them to keep the spoil from the city of Ai. And how foolish Achan was if only he would have waited on the Lord, he could have had what he wanted. And God gave Joshua the plan for conquering the city of Ai, and Joshua must follow it in order to be victorious. In verse uh, 3 through 8, or 2 through 8, it says, And you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, only it spoil." And its cattle you shall take as booty for yourselves, lay an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city behind the city. Do not go very far from the city. But all of you be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city, and it will come about when they come out against us as at the first, that we shall flee before them. For they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city. For they will say, They are fleeing before us as at the first. Therefore flee. We will also flee from them. Then you shall rise from the ambush and seize the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it will be, when you have taken the city, that you shall set the city on fire, according to the commandment of the Lord you shall do. See, I have commanded you. So we see that Joshua took a military so, uh, force of about 30,000 men. And let's look at verse 25 here. It says, so it was all that who fell at that day, both men and women were 12,000, all the people of Ai. And so Ai, it only had a population of men and women in total of 12,000. So we see that Joshua's force is double and a half bigger than Ai this time around. And Joshua's army, they sacked and burned Ai after luring the defenders out. And this was an act of God's sovereignty that caused Israel's defeat earlier due to Achan's disobedience. Yet this time, Israel would have overwhelming numbers, and God was still sovereign for this victory. And Joshua, he sent ten times the amount of men now than he did back in chapter 7, verse 4. In verse 9 and 10, it says... Joshua therefore sent them out, and, set, and they went to lie in ambush, and stayed between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. Then Joshua rose up early in the morning, and mustered the people, and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people of Ai. So Joshua was near to the people at a very crucial time. In verse 11 through 13, And all the, the people of war who were with him went up and drew near. 
and they came before the city and camped on the north side of Ai. Now a valley lay between them and Ai. So he took about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, all the army that was on the north of the city and its rear guard on the west of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. So in order for Israel to regain victory, they had to go on the offensive. And what they had to do is they had to obey the command that the Lord had commanded them. And Joshua, he sent 5,000 to prevent Bethel from helping. In verse 14 through 17, Now it happened when the king of Ai saw it, that the men of the city hurried and rose early and went out against Israel to battle. He and all his people at the appointed place before the plain. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all of Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. So all the people who were in Ai were called together to pursue them. And they pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who did not go out after Israel. So they left the city open and persuaded Israel. So we see that the men of Ai, they try the same exact strategy from before against Israel. However, God directs Joshua to use a separate and a different strategy against Ai. In verse uh, 18 through 29, large amount of verses here. It says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it into your hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that was in his hand toward the city. So those in ambush arose quickly out of their place. They ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered the city and took it, and hurried to set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to heaven. So they had no power to flee this way or that way, and the people who had fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. Now when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. Then the others came out of the city against them, so they were caught in the midst of Israel some on this side and some on that side. And they struck down so that they let none of them remain or escape. But the king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field in the wilderness where they pursued them. And when they had all fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed that all the Israelites returned Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. So it was that all who fell that day, both men and women, were 12,000 and all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back his hand in which he stretched out a spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the livestock and spoil of that city Israel took as booty for themselves according to the word of the Lord, which he had commanded Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and make it a heap forever, a desolation to this day. And king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until evening. And as the soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his corpse down from the tree, cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city, and raise it over a great heap of stones that remain unto this day. So, we see a big amount of verses here. But Joshua, he hoisted, hoisted javelin, which represented the go-ahead indicator to go ahead and conquer Ai. And possibly the raisin was even a signal of confidence in God as Verse 18 says, For I will give into your hand. And earlier, Moses, he lifted up the rod in arms, and it probably signified trust and contact 
with God for victory over Amalek in Exodus 17, verse 8 through 13. And the victory in God's judgment is complete. And because of God's faithfulness to Israel and Israel's faithfulness to God, this wasn't a halfway victory. And they could not show mercy to the enemy. They were called to crush the enemy completely at every opportunity. In verse 30, 31, now Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, at Mount Ebo. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, over which no man has wielded an iron tool. And they offered it on burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. So thanks is being offered to God for giving them victory. And the altar in obedience to the instruction of Exodus 20, verse 24 through 26, was built of uncut stones. And therefore, keeping worship was simple and untainted by man's manship. In Joshua, he gave God's word a detailed and central place. And it was a fulfillment of Deuteronomy 27 and chapter 28. In verse uh, 32 through 35, to wrap up the chapter, says, And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written, that all of Israel, with their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the stranger as well, as he who was born among them, half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that was written in the book of the law. This was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. So the ceremony takes place as mentioned. It took place in obedience of Deuteronomy 27 at the conclusion of Joshua's central campaign. And the tribes of Israel, they go on to move about 20 to 25 miles from Ai to Mount Ebel and Mount Gerizim. And the whole nation could hear the reading of the word of God, the law of God. And so to wrap up here, we see the plans of victory where God encourages Joshua and God gave Joshua instructions on what to do. He tells Joshua to not be afraid and this is how you're going to be victorious. And as Christians, we must remember that the past is the past. We must repent, we must die to self, and we must look forward to what God has in, for us right now when we fail. And we saw the plans made for the ambush upon Ai. We saw that Joshua, he stayed with the people. And when we move forward, if you are in Christ, Jesus Christ is near to us at all times, including even the crucial times. And many people, they look at the book of Joshua, they look at Joshua as a picture of Jesus. And we saw that Joshua and the people, they made preparations for battle. And we saw the success of the ambush as the fighting men of Ai had left the city. And Ai was totally defeated. It was totally burnt to the ground. And then the chapter goes into looking at the blessing and the cursing at, on Ebel and Gerizim. And then we see the altar that was built on Mount Ebel. We saw the blessings read from Mount Gerizim and the curses that were read from Mount Ebel, which fulfilled Deuteronomy 27 and Deuteronomy 28. And that's going to wrap up this uh, video for today. Uh, the hope is to do chapter uh, 9 tomorrow, where we're going to look at the Gibeonites. And so this is one third of the way through the book of Joshua. I hope you have a great rest of your night. God bless.